There have been three trends with Apple Arcade lately. The first is people asking on almost every tweet posted by Apple Arcade when NBA 2K22 Arcade Edition drops. Which is surprising to me considering how future light and poor I thought NBA 2K21 Arcade Edition was. The second is the return of games that were previously cancelled or were missing for some time arriving on Apple's gaming service. World of Demons and LEGO Star Wars Battles are just a few examples of these types of games. The third trend is seeing games that typically appear on the App Store as free-to-play entries that poorly transition as a premium experience on Apple Arcade, or at least as close as it could be. I feel like LEGO Star Wars Battles also falls within that trend. Something I didn't know about LEGO Star Wars Battles before it was released on Apple Arcade was that it originally shut down earlier this year in July 2021. The game was said to be shut down shortly after EA acquired Playdemic, one of the developers who worked on LEGO Star Wars Battles with ET Games from the game's inception back in 2019. To my knowledge, there hasn't been any official statement as to why the game originally shut down. But whatever the case was, it's back finally as an Apple Arcade exclusive. For the uninitiated, LEGO Star Wars Battles is a tower defense RTS game in the vein of Clash Royale. Players take control of either the light side or dark side of the force with their own set of unit and structure cards that cost energy to place. Units will move on their own and advance towards the opponent's base. Some units have specific behaviors, like AT-AT walkers that will only attack structures, while others like Mercenary Moroff will have a wind-up time before firing their weapon. As units advance, they can pass points that don't only serve as tower placement spots, but also serve as deployment zones for units, so they don't have to travel as far to reach the enemy base. Destroy the enemy base, and you win the match. In the event there is no destroyed base when the timer runs out, whichever side has the most standing towers wins, or a draw if no winner is decided. Players can earn medals by destroying bases or having more towers than their opponents when the match ends. Towers built earn you one medal, while destroying the base earns five medals and crystals, a currency used to upgrade heroes and buy more unit cards. Cards can be upgraded with LEGO studs, and you can earn more cards through winning battles or finding them in scans, which are essentially loot boxes in this game. Scans can be accessed when the timer is done, but you can boost your scans by unlocking them with medals won in battle. Boosting a scan allows you to get better rewards out of the scan than if you were to unlock it through time past. If you have seen my reviews for Zookeeper World and Temple Run Puzzle Adventure, then you probably know where I fall on LEGO Star Wars Battles. I don't find Clash Royale to be that thrilling or engaging to play in the first place, so that already has a knock going against it. Gears Pop was my first foray into a Clash Royale-like, and that was more with the IP attached to it than the actual gameplay. Star Wars, and by extension LEGO, is more appealing as an IP, but that appeal doesn't last that long before the gameplay and progression grow stale. If LEGO Star Wars Battles was a free-to-play title, you would be able to pay in order to unlock your scan sooner. Now that the game is on Apple Arcade, Time or earning medals are the only way to unlock those scans. Time-based scans won't award higher ranked rewards, and boosting even the lowest grade scan can take longer than anticipated. Matches are relatively short, but if you aren't winning and earning medals, then you aren't making any progress towards boosting the scan or progressing in rank. You also can't lower the amount needed to boost a scan through time, even if there is less than 30 minutes remaining to unlock a scan. For example, if a gold graded scan requires 12 hours or 20 medals to unlock, waiting 11 hours won't lower the amount of medals needed to unlock it. In these cases, waiting that long for few rewards seems like a bad use of time. You can complete season missions to get extra cards and other rewards, but as you're limited to 3 scans with only one of them being active at a time, running through those scans and trying to unlock them through earning medals is the fastest way forward. However, boosting a scan can be tricky with how the matchmaking works. Generally speaking, you'll be paired up against someone of equal skill, determined by the number of trophies your team has. 
Light and dark sides have separate trophy rankings, and the combination of them will give you an overall ranking, which allows you to unlock new planets and get access to new cards. Every so often, you'll be paired against someone higher than you, or vastly lower than you, depending on your recent match performances. Fighting with my 400 plus trophy light side army against a 60 trophy dark side army seems incredibly unfair. It's nice to get some easy medals, but it feels dirty, especially when the opposing team has no answer to a difference that vast. On the flip side, losing to a foe ranked almost 200 trophies above me without getting a single medal feels like time wasted. LEGO Star Wars Battles at least has the production values going for it. The look, music, and sound of LEGO pieces and Star Wars is certainly not of low quality. Between the gold studs as rewards and seeing Ewoks and Stormtroopers in LEGO form, TT games are great at translating properties to fit under the LEGO style. Even the planets would look what you would expect them to look like in LEGO form. It's a bummer then that the map layouts of the different planets appear to be the same despite the scenery changes. Having said that, I'm not exactly going to continue playing this game, unlock every single planet, and see if there are any differences in the layout changes. LEGO Star Wars Battles continues the trend of mobile games with free-to-play-like mechanics, not making a smooth transition over to Apple Arcade. That alone is enough for this game to score a 2 out of 5. If you are a fan of Star Wars, Legos, and enjoy the tower defense gameplay of Clash Royale, then Lego Star Wars Battles delivers on that front. Having two different armies to manage and customize is a neat wrinkle to vary things up, however slight it may be. Still, the method of unlocking scans and general progression means that this is a game meant to be played over a long period of time. There isn't much depth in the gameplay to keep me interested in the long run, and knowing I can have a string of defeats while making no forward progression stays off any interest I have to continue playing. There are players that will enjoy a game like LEGO Star Wars Battles, but this isn't the game for me. 